And to all you people back in the Shire, turn your porch lights off because we're coming home with a trophy. Hey there, welcome to Sharkcast, part of podcast dedicated to the greatest sporting club in the history of the world, the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. This short, sharp mailbag show is brought to you by Dyson Logistics, the Royal Motor Yacht Club in Port Hacking, and Jason Hawes, Crips and Crips Real Estate. My name is Sam Shinazium, OG from 2015, 10th season of podcasting about the greatest club in the history of the world, the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. My honor to do so for so long, having so much fun. We're trying to keep it fresh. We're trying to do things each and every month or so to keep you guys and girls interested in what we're doing. We love your support. We absolutely cannot do this without you. And it is so much fun to engage and communicate with you all, including in episodes like this. Stay tuned to all of our socials at Sharkcast Pod on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We're also on YouTube as well. Subscribe there. That would be an awesome help. And you'll be hearing more from us on those channels about some exciting things happening in the near future. But until we get there, uh, the Sharks are on a bye, which is great. Two points, no injuries. Fingers crossed nothing else negative happens, which I don't think it will. Just putting that out there. And it's a great place to be having the week off. Origin is done. Great game three, even despite my issues with the concept of, not the concept of origin, but the, the way it's run and the way it's handled. Great game, lights out, phenomenal. I hope everyone who loves origin enjoyed that game, but that's done and dusted. It is club time, time for us to march on into the finals. And we'll be doing so, we know, without Nico Hines. And so far, so good, that has worked out for us. It'll be difficult without him. Let's see what this team can do. Next game up is Saturday week against the Cowboys in North Queensland. It'll be a challenging game, but we do have a lot of success against that team and at that ground as well. So let's go up there and win that game. You'll be hearing more about that game in the coming episodes, in the coming days and week. No confirmation on who is going to be playing fullback for the Sharks. It won't be Will Kennedy. We know this. He's taken the early plea from his incident in inverted commas against the West Tigers the other week. So we know Will will not be there, which sucks, but we'll see what happens there. It'll either be uh, young Liam Eason or there'll be shuffling happening, and we'll see which way the coaching staff goes there. Uh, I've got an inkling you may be seeing a debut, but I can't guarantee that, obviously, until Teamless Tuesday at the earliest. So see how we go with that team lineup. You'll be hearing about that as well during the week. Pretty pumped up. Uh, I love nothing more than talking about the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, as do all of our listeners. Let's get through some mail while I have some of your attention. Anthony says, I'm gutted about Nico. After sleeping on it, I feel the next six to eight weeks for the Sharks is all about simple, high percentage play built around fantastic discipline, with and without the ball, leading to domination through the middle. That's been the key to success for us this season, but it's been missing prior to the West Tigers game. Anything other than that, and it'll be curtains for 2024, regardless if we limp into the finals or drop out. And Anthony, really wise words. I completely agree with you. Uh, We saw a bit of razzle-dazzle against the West Tigers, and that was because they were dominant in the ruck, and forwards were going forward, the backs were going forward, and it was all super. But I think when they play more challenging teams, your game plan here is exactly what is needed. And I think we'll be winning some tight games. I don't think there'll be too many blowouts. But we've seen what the back line can do if given the opportunity, given early ball. So I like your your blueprint there. Thank you so much for being in touch. Really appreciate it. Uh, David has been in touch. He sent a few emails in. And then the last one he sent in, uh, which I've been slacking responding to, he said, Nico has gone. Sweet baby Jesus. Our season is hanging by a thread. I'm speechless. I'm without speech. So a Seinfeld reference for me and for everyone, which I always appreciate. Uh, so far, so good, David. One from one without Nico. Let's see how we keep going there. I uh, appreciate you being in touch. Adam has written to us. Adam is hellbent on getting that shark attack song, which we've been talking about all season. So we're still working on that one. Uh, stick with us, Adam, on that one. But you said, I have a new idea inspired by the Southern End crowd at the West Tigers game. 
The ground announcer should encourage us all to start a Mexican wave at kickoff and again at half time. I've never seen one at Shark Park. I reckon the entire crowd would be into it. Hope you can help us adopt it if you have any private access to the inner sanctum it, that may give it a go before some other bogan NRL site takes my idea. Kind regards, Adam. Oh, Adam, I'm not a huge Mexican wave kind of guy, which probably won't surprise you. But anything that helps crowd encouragement, I'm all for. We'll pass on that idea to someone at the club, okay? And we'll see if that goes anywhere. I don't know if it will. I think they're a little bit worried about, you know, the less responsible people throwing things in the air, et cetera, et cetera. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if they're worried about that, but that would be a concern maybe for someone in club land. But Adam, thank you for being in touch. Uh, Neil wrote to us. Now, Neil was a bit confused. He thought he saw me on the Fox Sports coverage at the West Tigers game, but that wasn't me. I informed him. I sent him a picture of me at the game, and then I sent him a picture of the guy who he thought was me, and they were worlds apart. So that was kind of funny, though. Thanks, Neil. He says, congratulations to Mulatalo scoring his first hat trick. Uh, I loved our intensity and hunger. Ramian really turned the game with a brilliant intercept. We even nailed the start. It felt like old times. We can enjoy the weekend and the bye week. Seeing those beautiful Reebok jerseys brought back so many fond memories of the 90s. I felt like a glutton for punishment over the last month. It's times like this that make it all worth it. Thanks for keeping us all informed and up to date with your podcast. It's always entertaining and insightful. Well, thank you, Neil, for listening. Appreciate it. We try and keep it entertaining. We try and keep it insightful. It's all we can really do. Jamie from the UK has written to us and said, what a great win. The top four is still on. Trindle and Atkinson hit the right balance to bring the rest of the team into play. That's what's been missing for the past five or six weeks. So Jamie is a big fan of what the halves did for us, as I am. It was, it was a great hit out. Has to be said, though, the forwards did their job. So that hasn't always been the case over the past few months when Nico has been there. The bench had an impact again and made sure we crushed the Tigers. Uh, you then say, music aside, have you heard of Frank Turner and the Sleepless Souls? Great music and worth a listen. Well, Jamie, as mentioned on this podcast before, I've definitely heard of Frank Turner. I'm a fan. And Josh Bolling, regular co-host, Sharks analyst, has a tattoo of Frank Turner lyrics. So we love Frank at Shark House Pod. And we're glad that you do too. Thank you for raising that and, and recommending it. And this is super interesting. You're moving to Australia in September to the Gold Coast. Do I know of any Sharkies on the Gold Coast who get together to watch games? I'll have to find somewhere that uh, shows our game in week one of the finals. I know a bunch of people on the Gold Coast who go for the Sharks. I don't know if they meet and hang out, but uh, there'll be plenty of fans up there. And if you stick around for next year, you'll be able to see the team play a bunch of times in Queensland. And we shall see what happens with the finals. Hopefully you come down and watch a game. We welcome you to Sharkland. That's exciting. You say, keep up the great work with the podcast. I've not missed one in five years. Well, that is exceptional. I cannot thank you enough. Super appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We had a comment on the YouTube from Pezza. Thanks for the post-game review. Nice to hear some happiness back in the discussions. Go Siffa. And that's a very funny remark because if you'd listened to the review episode with Gary Dover last week, I did go up to Siffa Talakai in a whirlpool of madness and say to him, good game. And it shocked even me, the level of my stupidity and how far I have fallen in life. <laughs> but that, that's a funny one, Pezza. Thank you. Martin has written to us. Now, Martin, I believe, sits in the upper ET because we chatted at full time last week. He says it's my first time writing in. Dominant performance, great win for the Sharks. Can't read into it too much, though the Tigers put in a reserve grade effort. I wish Braley could run like that every week. It makes a huge difference. Absolutely right there, Martin. Uh, it was a reserve grade effort from the Tigers, and Braley did dominate. He needs to do it every week. Cowboys away and a resurgent Rabbitohs coming up will be a firmer test for the Trindle-Atkinson partnership. I hope it clicks, but it's still pretty green and needs to be humming come finals time. They're very green, both as players in that capacity at that level 
and especially together. So we need to give them some time and they've got time. They've got seven, eight, nine weeks to get to the finals. Nice to have a stress-free evening watching the Sharks for once and even nicer scoring 50-plus points, which we don't do very often. Given the past few weeks, a much-needed win for our club. Cheers, Martin. Thank you very much, Martin. Don't be a stranger, please. Thank you so much. Peter says, a much better effort from the boys against the Tigers. I watched the replay. Was Ronnie giving it to some Tiger supporters after he scored? I'm guessing they were mouthing off at him, so he gave it back. Game highlight for me was seeing BHU back fit and firing. Love the pod. Thanks for putting it together. Cheers, Sharky Pete. Okay, we're working back to front there, Sharky Pete. Thank you for listening to the pod. It's our pleasure to put it together for you and for everyone else. BHU was absolutely outstanding out there last week. Hopefully that just keeps getting better and better with his match fitness. And I believe Ronnie might have been alerting some of the away fans about something. He must have copped a mouthful or something because that seemed a little bit, even for Ronnie, you know, 5% over the top pointed at someone in particular. So uh, people on TV, the, some of the commentators said he was doing the Hulk Hogan ear thing, which it was nothing at all like that. That was the opposite of that. But he had a great game, hat trick, and he's in great form. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate you. RCB says, shame about Jesse C., the boys looked improved and played direct, didn't muck around. The jerseys look great as well. How good we should play in them all the time. Well, you're giving us a run home. You think we need to win five games to make the top four? You could argue that losing the three before the Tigers has hindered the top four chase. It leaves less margin for error. Yeah, completely agree with that, RCB. BHU was good. Finally, some minutes. We need him. Royce was solid again. As far as the Kennedy situation, you say, what are we doing? Ison Iro or Hiroti. I believe Hiroti is not available as of this moment, RCB. I don't know if he'll be fit next week, but at the moment he's not fit. When I say that, he's injured. I don't believe they're going to move Kale around. It is obviously a a possibility because he's played at that in that position at a high level of the World Cup. But that's that's one option. I would either do that or I would be bringing in the young fellow to debut one of the two. I probably wouldn't look too far away from those options. Cowboys are very good with a kicking game. Chad, Robson, in fact, their spine in itself are great at kicking. So I think we need a, a, a trained fullback. So we'll see what happens there. Chad says, hope you're well. Great win against the Tigers. I did not expect to win by so much. Great to see Ronnie back on the score sheet. And great to see a start for a change so well. Absolutely. The start was everything, wasn't it? Uh, rotten news about Jesse Colquhoun. I can't believe he's set for another long-term injury. Hope he recovers well and comes back better than ever. I think he will. You know, ACL is obviously a super serious injury, one of the worst you can have. But just given the temperament that guy has shown in his young career so far and his ability to get past similar injuries and come back bigger and better, I think he's still got it in him to do that. And the entire club and Shark Nation is behind him. Uh, we have to remember who the win was against. The team coming last, they played even worse than their position on the ladder indicates. Love Tricky and Akko together. Interesting to see what happens if they're playing well when Nico is fit to return. Personally, I'd have Nico back at six with Akko off the bench in 14 in a Connor Watson-like role. Interesting. Very interesting there, Chad. Don't hate it, but we'll see where each player is at. I mean, Trindle could be killing it by that point. Uh, Akko, they, they both... I, I, it's hard because... Do you want to have a utility on your bench, even though he can play most positions? Just, I guess it's just up to how the coaching staff want to play it and who they're playing and that kind of thing. You say the Will Kennedy charge was ridiculous. Big decision for Fitz. Does he promote Eason for just one game to see how he goes, or does he put Eero at fullback? We'll see what happens. Thanks for the podcast. Have a great week. We'll talk soon. You also say, oh, I came close to talking to you at the Tigers game uh, as the second half was about to begin. I uh, didn't want to disturb you. One day I will say hello. Well, you know what, Chad? Please do, because uh, I love talking sharks. So, yeah, don't ever hesitate. I am very much someone that you can disturb anytime because uh, whatever I'm doing is probably not that important. So, please feel free. Like, you can come say good day if you feel like it. If you don't, yeah, that's completely cool too. David wrote in and said, a great win against Tigers, but they're awful. 
Let's hope a confidence gained from this win will have them back on track. Fun fact, the Sharks have seven premiership games to play this season. If they win the next seven, the Sharks' all-time win-loss will be at 674 wins and 674 losses. Good way to start the semi-final campaign. Cheers, David. That's a good stat. I might steal that one for work. And well done for getting it. That's, that's cool. Next up, we have Jess. And Jess says, is Sharkcast going to Las Vegas? Can we expect something over there? The answer to that is we will be there in some capacity. And I'm not sure how many of us are going. But yes, Sharkcast will be in Vegas. And we will be talking with the appropriate people about a gathering. Can't guarantee it. Just depends what's happening over there. Obviously, it's it's a pretty crazy country. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to organize things over there in advance. But uh, definitely looking to have a get together and what that means i can't really say at the moment as in i don't know it could be a show it could be hey let's get together and talk about the sharks and have a cocktail or a mocktail or whatever your poison is uh, definitely the plan is to be in vegas and do shark cast type things like podcasts and videos and social media things and that kind of thing so very much looking forward to it can't really say much more at the moment because not not much more is is locked in, to be perfectly honest. So we'll see what happens. We would love to do anything we can over there. So uh, if you're heading over there, like many of you are, uh, please stay tuned, stay in touch, and we'll see what we can do. But we'd love to do it is the short answer. I wanted to give uh, Gaz another shout-out. Gaz is a listener, not Gaz from the Sharks, but different Gaz. Uh, Gaz, I spoke about on a few episodes ago, he's going to Fiji, and he's been there a few times. He takes over Sharks gear to hand out as charitable gifts i guess you could say he is focused on sharks hats if anyone has old sharks hats with their members hats or any shark sort of hats in okay condition he would love to hear from you so get in touch with me and i'll pass on his info to you and if you have some sharks hats whether it's one or whether it's a bunch i don't know if you have any to give away to people of fiji who need it and would like it then please be in touch. That's from Gaz. Steve has been in touch. He was happy with the hit out against the West Tigers. Uh, upset that Jesse Calhoun, a player we need in the 17, he was terrific in the short stint he was on, but hearing the news of his ACL is very sad for the Sharks. Could have done with him later in the season. He's a top 17 player for sure. Sad for the young kid who just can't get a break. Injury plagues him. We need him fit and firing in 2025. I believe he is the future, and he can help the Sharks win their next premiership. I can see why the Sharks signed him long-term. Uh, you're also hoping for a big game against the Cowboys next week, so we can be a top-four threat. You ask, who is our fullback next week? Iro, Talakai, or Eason? You think they're the only two options. You don't want to see Akko go back there, which I agree with. You're also asking why it's a 5.30 game. It's bigger than that, and we all know it. And then you compare it to a few other teams and games. Who decides these times? Well, the NRL decides it, my friend, and they decide it in November, usually, or some time like that. And it's hard to sort of tell who's going to be good and bad in a lot of cases so far in advance, but that's how it's done. I think you know that, Steve. I don't know if that was just a, a silly question you're asking me or a serious one. If it was serious, that's the answer. Uh, you say, anyway, up the Sharks, let's keep winning. Absolutely, Steve. Thank you for being in touch. We'll see what happens against the Cowboys. Jay's been in touch. Great win against the Tigers. Hoping they can keep winning till the end. You say it's going to be hard to throw Nico back if we keep winning. Fitzy might need to try him at fullback. Who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens there. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, Jay. But I, I understand what you're saying. Your choice to bring in at fullback this week is young Eason. Eason. We've got to get a pronunciation on that one. But the week off will be good. Pl players can get over any niggling injuries. Let's not let ill discipline get in the way of our next match. We need to beat the Cowboys. At least we'll have a stress-free weekend this week. Guaranteed two points. Let's keep marching on up, up. That's from Jay. Thanks, Jay, for being in touch. Kira has written to us. I'm a happy girl again. The Sharks did us proud at the West Tigers game. I love Nico, but I think a two-half should be tricky. And Atko, they played the house down. They did. I have to admit, they played really good. Kira, thank you for being in touch. You also say... After the bye, let's keep winning and playing like that. Uh, you're disappointed to hear that Jesse C has such a serious injury because you think he needs to be in the team. 
It's good to be able to smile again after a win. Keep up the good work there, guys. And up, up, Cronulla. Let's keep winning. That's from Kira. Thanks for being in touch. Really appreciate it. Glad that you're happy about that. Reese simply said, Oh, Shanaz, that win feels so good. So very good. And I agree with you. Uh, Daniel's in touch and he said, When you did the last mailbag, you read out that Nico is out, but half of you wanted that anyway. Had me laughing out loud at work. Let's see what happens. And I replied, you got to stay lighthearted, my friend. So thank you, Daniel, for being in touch. Jordan says, I've been out of action for the last two months. I got married on the afternoon of the 25th of May, the day of the Panthers game. Congratulations, Jordan. And I got back from the honeymoon in Europe just in time for the Tigers game. Did I miss anything? <laughs> you paid 50 bucks for the month subscription of watching the Sharkies. Uh, play while you're overseas, but you're glad to see him turn around against the Tigers. He's hoping we can manage to keep Royce. Now he's turned a corner and playing like an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, he really is killing it, Royce. So let's see what happens there. Are uh, you gutted for Jesse Colquhoun? You also asked the question about who to play if and when Kennedy is suspended for the week. Thanks again for the podcast you're always delivering for us. I can tell you, Jordan, I'm always trying. If I'm not always delivering, I'm always trying. So thanks for supporting us. Thanks for being in touch. Brown Snake says, what a therapeutic win. Atmosphere was good at the game. I bought myself the replica jersey. Great night of rugby league. That's awesome to hear. Thank you for being in touch. And that is a lot of the mail that was written to us in the past week. Hopefully it's all of it, but it's definitely most of it. If we missed any, we'll get back to it. Uh, just thought I'd jump on, short, sharp episode for you all. Hopefully it's short and sharp and your thoughts in the mailbag. Look, it's going to be an interesting finish to the season, that's for sure. Missing our star player, but otherwise relatively fit. Jesse's gone for the year, but he had only been back for a game. So hopefully it's it's manageable in the forward pack. We've got a decent run home. If we can jag a bunch of wins, I think we'll be top four. And if you're in the top four, you never know what's going to happen. Let's try and keep our heads up. And I'm not saying everything's rosy, but we're in a good spot in a lot of ways. So if you haven't been down to Golden Bay, the Chinese restaurant down in the Sharks Precinct, I think it's called Golden Bay. I apologize if it's called something else. Uh, Had yum cha there yesterday. Really good. Really good quality. If you're into that kind of thing, definitely recommend it great view of the field and uh, i'm keen to go back there and try some more of their delights we'll be back during the week with content i guarantee you that stay with us thank you so much for your support as i said at the start of the episode if you can subscribe to all the things you can subscribe to that helps us a lot whether it's the social medias definitely subscribe to youtube and to the podcast itself on whatever app you're listening to That is a great thing for us, and you also get the episode as soon as it is ready and uploaded. Sometimes it's hard to do the posts as soon as we upload for social media and that kind of thing, or sometimes it's just the wrong time of day and you won't get the kind of traction that you want, so you don't do it. But if you're subscribed, you're getting it straight away, and there's a whole bunch of you that do that, and I so appreciate it. So best thing you can do for us at Sharkcast is keep spreading the word to your friends, your family, your neighbors, people at the game, people on the train, People on the bus, people at the movie cinemas. Hey, listen to Sharkcast. Here's how you do it. Show me your phone. Here's the app. Have a listen. If it's not for you, there's other Sharks podcasts out there who are doing great things as well. And we send our love and respect to those guys as well. Until then, we'll talk to you soon. Up, up, Cronulla. Let's go. Tell your porch lights off because we're coming home with a trophy.